Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors at Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but without having to go into the doctor's office or waiting in line at the pharmacy. Everything is shipped discreetly to your door. And if you use code Holly, you can get your first order for free. Just pay $5 in shipping. Visit bluechew.com for more information. So today I am, it feels like a little bit of a coming home for me. Uh, my guest today is somebody that I've worked with a lot. My mom used to shoot him. That's how long he's been in the industry. Um, he's always been somebody that I have really enjoyed working with. He's one of the, the kindest people I know. He is now celebrating his 20th year in the industry. He is truly a porn legend who has won countless awards, including Male Performer of the Year for AVN, XRCO, and XBiz. He's an AVN Hall of Famer. Let's welcome the one and only Tommy Yen. Oh, Hi. wow. That's a wonderful introduction. Thanks so much, Holly. It's wonderful to be here. It's so good to see you. Likewise, likewise. Yeah, we have a we have a long history. Whew, and it feels like it went like that. I know, right? Man. It's crazy. Do you remember the? So you must have shot for my mom before I ever shot you, yeah, right? I was yeah. probably assisting her when sure, you first started sure. working for her. She had the place. I'm trying to remember where it was. The studio in West LA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was it. It had little hallways and different places. You you know. Yeah. Like oh, I gotta go over here and over there and all that. Well, because we always had all yeah. these sets built and all these sure. set walls, yeah, and yeah. to create depth and dimension, yeah, yeah. there'd be like. It wouldn't be just one wall, it would be with this wall and then this wall and then like a corner and there'd mm -hmm. be gaps between it so you could yeah, put lights yeah, in there. Yeah. And so, yeah, when you were trying to go to the bathroom, there was always like this kind of maze of yeah. like set walls that you had to navigate to get back there. It was, but it was wonderful. So, yeah. I miss it. Do you remember the first time you worked with my mom? You know, not specifically, but mm -hmm. I do remember the wonderful energy and, and you know, uh, experience and the, just the, and she was just so wonderful. So yeah. I, again, I had such great experiences with her and the young ladies we work with. And again, I, sometimes I'll see an old thing and wow, that's a throwback. And I remember that. Yeah. Right. Gone are the days. I know. I know. All the time and effort yeah, and such a different the styling and the world. wardrobe yeah. and even like the wardrobe for the guys, yeah. right? Because nowadays it's like, show up with like dress slacks and jeans and a button down and that's your outfit whereas we would like put us in some cool wow i feel you know really suits special. yeah yeah or right. or <laughs> my mom did a shoot i think it, i'm pretty sure it was ramon and stacy valentine i don't remember who the other guy was but the guys were like in little like kitchen aprons sure sure like, and that's it yeah, yeah. the idea was they I were like it. her like kitchen servants and it's just like it's it's just very funny to look back on those yeah, pictures. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about you and your beginnings. How did you get started in the adult industry? I got started in the adult industry. Well, I refer to my prior years to the adult industry as the adult industry anyway, because I started out doing that male exotic dancing, right? Magic Mike, Chippendales. Yeah. Again, Chippendales was the, the, the beginning of that whole men taking their clothes off for women to entertain women mm -hmm. that was in the 70s mm -hmm. and that kind of what is what sparked that whole male review thing and a lot of offshoots would were 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 kind of made you know a bunch of guys wow you know a bunch of gut that worked out and such you know they thought to themselves well you know these chippendale guys are doing that so we can always make these little offshoots so mm -hmm. i worked for a group called american male and another one was called satin affair so they just it was all in the same tone of the mm -hmm. Chippendale style dancing for women, but with these particular offshoots of, uh, so I started back, I want to say I was probably 22, 23. Mm -hmm. And as a kid growing up in high school, I was very, I'm not the biggest guy to begin with. I'm only five, eight, maybe five, seven now because gravity robbed <laughs> me of an inch over the years. So in high school, I was very, uh, underdeveloped. I felt like, you know, in fact, I, didn't have hair on myself until I was maybe 17 or so. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I avoided girls like the plague because, you know, I didn't want to end up being in this, a compromising position and, mm -hmm. and, and and her go, wait, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Embarrassing. So I, I avoided them a lot in, in, 
in high school. Anyway, I realized that early on, guy, girls like guys with muscles, right? And I thought, you know, I, that's a good thing for me to do is maybe start to work out. And maybe because, again, being so small, smallest kid in my – I could fit in a locker at, in senior year. Oh, no. Yeah. Did people try to, like, shove yeah, you in the lockers? Yeah, I got shoved in the locker, <laughs> oh, no. thrown in the shower, like turn all the other showers – Turn them on and then throw us in. Yeah. Throw the smaller guys in and we'd slide across the ground. And anyway, so I got into the working out and then there was a, te- in, in Jersey, I was born and raised, there was a nightclub called Jugs and Mugs. <laughs> it's kind of like a Hooters type, yep. thing, if you can imagine, by virtue of the name. And I knew a guy who was a promoter and he said, hey, you know, I, I do this thing. It's a ladies night. He would go to ladies nights. He would go to clubs around the, the area. And present them with an idea. Hey, on Wednesdays, it's ladies' night. I got an idea. We'll do a hot body contest for guys. The girls can come watch. And then after it's over, we'll let all the guys in. Mm-hmm. And how great would that be? You let all the guys into a bunch of women that just watch guys dancing. Yeah. And we're all ready to go, right? It's so funny because you use like this sure. one, like these guys to attract women. And then you let in all the guys that the women maybe don't. <laughs> Absolutely. Would not go to the bar for. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. <laughs> so I thought, you know, maybe that's my way to the dancing thing. So I was like, oh, I got to figure this out. And I was shy. And mm-hmm. so one, one, one night I said, you know what? I, I'm going to enter myself into this contest. I'm going to throw myself to the wolves and just come out to back in black or I'm too sexy for my clothes or my shirt and I'm going to the, you know bad to the bone by you know uh Thurgood so I did it and I threw myself to the wolves and went out and danced in front of these women and it was it was like euphoric because I just you know I've never done that before so here I am trying to do this and what song things, wait, so what song did you pick I came out to uh uh bad to the bone okay I would have gone with Back in Black. And then I went into Back in Black, and then I went into... (laughs) Okay, So it's... But one of the things that I thought was, I'm going to separate myself from these guys and try some gymnastics trick. (laughs) Were you, like, in gymnastics? No. Or you just decided you were going to do a cartwheel? You know what I'm saying? I was, like, a self, you know, proclaimed (laughs) stunt whatever. Okay. So at the time, I knew one of the bouncers there, and I went up to him. I said, hey, Anthony, I want to I do this idea. This was prior to my act. I said, I got this idea. I want to do a thing. I want to I do this backflip, but what I need you to do is I'm, I need you to assist me. He's like, how do I do that? I said, well, you, you kind of just stand upright, and you put your hands, you lock them together, standing upright, uh-huh. and I'm going to run up to you, put my hands on your shoulders, put my foot in your hands, and then... You flip me and I go backwards and I do a backflip and land and then everybody will go crazy. Wait, okay, so hold on. Are you wearing clothes during this? I'm wearing clothes. Oh, okay. <laughs> wearing clothes. Let me okay. just stress that. You know, right? <laughs> just wanted to check. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I come out, do the thing, you know, blah, blah, blah. Here I am doing the stuff. Take the jacket off, toss it over there. And I look at, I look at Anthony <laughs> and I give him the green light, right? And he goes, and I said, okay. And I run up. And I put my shoulders, my hand on his shoulders, put my foot in his and he flips me. And I go up, but I'm not flipping over. Oh, no. So I'm up. It's probably as high as the lights, parallel to the ground. Oh, no. But I'm not flipping because I didn't, something went wrong. I didn't. So now I crash, I come crashing down on my elbow. Like I fell out of an airplane. Boom, I landed so hard. You could could hear the people. You could hear in the crowd. And I got up. And I brushed myself off and I went like this to the girls. One more time. Oh my God. And then I looked at them and said, come on, man. And I ran up and did it and did the flip and landed it. Perfect. Oh, yeah. And did the trick and did the, you know, did the routine and I lost, but I, I got the experience I needed. You know, I, I, I got out in front of people and that's what was important. Yeah. You know, in front of the dude, from the girls. So I did that. I lost. So what I did do there was i met a guy who was one of the you know uh what do you call that one of my uh like a scout no he was dancing too he was competing oh, as okay, well as okay. you know so uh i met him and he said yeah you got a good look man you, you know you're out there and you did you went you, you did went the for it. you, you know, did it yeah you went for it he says i dance present day and I, I'm on this circuit, and we go up to North Jersey and Delaware, and you know I go I go around to these things, these hot body contests, and it's a it's an actual job. You could you should you could 
do it. And I thought, really? He says, yeah. He says, I can plug you into this whole network. Kind of like out here. Mm-hmm. If you can imagine, you know, you got this company, this studio, mm-hmm. that, and you're your freelance guy and you go over here and the next thing you know, you make your network and mm-hmm. next thing you know, on Monday you're over here, on Tuesday you're over there and Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I got his number and stayed in touch with him and he said, all right, we're going to, I'm going to put you in, I'm going to plug you into this network. You're going to come up and work for Jukebox Eddie's up in North Jersey. Mm-hmm. Bring your joke, bring your clothes and your, your act, put a little act together. And Did the act include a backflip? I started to perfect them. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was I got known for being real gymnastics and doing tr- you know break dancing stuff. You know, yeah. you got to separate yourself from yeah, the rest, right? Absolutely. And then so I got plugged into that world, and then through the guys, I met uh, one guy. He says you should go out for Playgirl magazine, mm. and I go, okay. I know what that is, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I've, so I'm dancing, right? Can I do that now? That's another ch- that's just, that's another step, right? Yeah, I got to take it all off and dan- and, and do a, a, a spread for Playgirl magazine. And you know what's sad is you know what that is. I obviously know what yeah, that yeah. is, but some people in our audience might not know sure. what it is because it's no longer around. Yeah, for, yeah. So for those of you who the younger generation, maybe some Gen Zs on here, you know, Playgirl magazine was essentially like Playboy for women. Meaning it featured men, so it's yeah. basically like guys posing naked for for women. Magazine. Yeah. So I said, you know what? All right, I'm going to give that a whirl because the guy said it'll help your cachet, your mm-hmm. marquee value mm-hmm. when they announce you. This next guy graced the pages of Playgirl magazine. All yeah. the girls were like, "Woo!" Yeah, versus yeah, the yeah. other guy who didn't. Yeah. Or he was just some regular guy. Yeah. Or maybe he was in uh, one of the Young and the Restless, or you know. So all these guys were trying to do their thing, trying to act and do Young and the Restless in order to get their cachet value up, in order right. to be more, you know, appealing to uh-huh. wherever whoever would hire him. So I did the Playgirl thing, and then that was that was beneficial, you know. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Was this when you did you have to get? hard at this point or no. could you ha- be soft because there was a point where playgirl yeah. changed and you had I to be hard but there was both it kind of gradually went like it right. started out soft and then eventually all right work yourself up so they did have you get yeah. hard in it oh, okay i okay. did it twice i ended up doing playgirl in i want to say 94 mm-hmm. and then which is interesting because i'm chinese and italian Oh, okay. Right? People think I look Native American, possibly, oh, right? Right. Yeah, okay, I see that. So I did a Native American act as a dancer. I went yeah. to this. I went to the Pet Boys, you know, the local automotive store, and I bought a bunch of chamois. Have you ever? A chamois is like a physical skin of a of an of an animal. Uh-huh. A chamois cloth. It's okay. Like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Got gotcha, you. Gotcha. Wash cars and you, yeah. you you dry it off and it soaks up the water and it doesn't leave a streak. So that's what a chamois oh, does. Okay. So what I did is I I think oh, I want to do an Indian. I had long hair time down here. No uh-huh. facial hair. Uh-huh. I'll show you one day. I'll shoot you a picture. Yeah, I want to see it. it. So there I was, and I said, "I'm going to do a. I'm going to do this spread of a Native American, because that's what I did. This act. I took chamois and made legs, wraps, and things, and you know, show you how good I was from a wardrobe, yeah, you know, costume design standpoint. I made all my clothes, and then I appeared in 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 Playgirl as an Indian." But I don't know if that would work today, right? I know. I don't <laughs> you know think what I'm saying? They'll be like, wait. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that was my You first, could not do that today. <laughs> you know, that was, that was my first bread. I, I, I portrayed a Native American Indian. And I did the act. And when I used to do the act, the chicks went crazy. Mm-hmm. I come out and put fire. And when boom, boom, boom. You know, I come out to, uh, you know, some uh, Europe. Cherokee. There was a song called Cherokee. Uh-huh. You know, anyway. So that's what we did back then. We came up with ideas. You know, you're either a cop or an astronaut or a UPS guy or an Indian or a, you know, that's yeah. what you did. That's what, you know, or, yeah. you know, suit and tie, sharp dress. Role playing man, kind of thing. You know, yeah. Those kind of things. So that's what I, that's when I, that's kind of where I came from. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up doing it, dancing around the tri state air for eight, nine, 10 years, whatever. Then I ended up moving to Florida and I got, uh, I was married at the time. That's a whole other story. She and I, we separated. I, I remained in Florida. And I was dancing at a club where the girls dance on one side for the guys. And mm-hmm. the guys dance on the other side for the girls. Mm-hmm. So by this, by this point, I was divorced and kind of not in a good place because 
you know. Yeah. Nobody feels good after they get the No, divorce. no. Or more often than not, they don't. Yeah. It's Some not, people are it's like, not woohoo, fun, I'm great. It's not a fun process. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Some are like, woohoo, I'm glad it's over. But yeah. not in this case. I loved her. And... So anyway, she divorced. We divorced. She went her way. I went mine. I stayed in Florida. So I ended up meeting a girl who she and I would goof around and just have some fun. And I remember one particular time we would, I might have her apartment and we just had sex. And she would roll, she'd fall over. Light a cigarette. Wow, that was great. That was amazing. And I'm like, well, thanks, you know. <laughs> I appreciate it. She goes, you should make movies. And I go, what? What kind? What do you mean? She's like, you should, you should do porn. And I said, nah, you know. Yeah. So here I already been dancing, did Playgirl, was naked, and now I'm presented with this other, this another kind of a. It's the next step. Yeah, and I thought. And she's like, you would do well. I mean, you're built well. And I said, okay. She says, I've actually been to California a number of times. And I've done a few movies. And I'm like, get out of town. She's really? like, yeah. She, she, her, she went by the name of Casey Bray okay. years ago. So she says, I go to California once a month for 10 days. And I shoot. And if you want to go next time, I'll take you. And I go, well, you know, I, I'd have to miss work. She goes, I'll tell you what, I'll pay the... I'll give you the money. Don't miss for work. And you come with me. Wow. She really believed in you. Yeah. I said, yeah. oh, well, okay. Fair enough. I can't, I can't turn that down. Right. So next thing you know, we're on a plane and we're flying to California. We land and I got her suitcase. I got mine and we're staying at a friend's of her apartment. And then she's on the phone handling all her, her, her meetings and her interview, her appointments and stuff. So we go to, I don't know, we go to like a vivid. Mm -hmm. So we go in and I, I'm just kind of open the door for it. And she, she goes in and I sit off to the side and then they have their conversation and they say, they, so what do you do? Well, I do this. I don't, you know, the whole, I don't do this. I don't, I do that or whatever. And then she would go and then the, the guy would say, well, that's great. Well, we're going to book you for some scenes. Who's that? And she would turn and go, that's Tommy Gunn. And he should do it. And this and that and this and that. And I'm going, hold on. <laughs> I'm, you know, had you picked a name yet? I had chosen Tommy Gunn. I okay. didn't choose Tommy Gunn actually. It was given to me backing up years when I was in the dancing. When I first got in dancing, I went to a bar. I started to work out and put on some good muscle. I went to a bar, saw a bartender friend that I hadn't seen in years, Mike or whatever, John, whatever. He, hey, Mike, John, whatever. Man, how are you doing? I said, good. He says, man, look at those guns. And I go, what? He goes, yeah, there's, that's what they call guns. Yeah, arms. yeah. He said, you should be Tommy Gunn. I said, well, okay, that's my real name, Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there it was. So that was Tommy Gunn was Makes born sense. probably in the 90s, late yeah. okay. 91. Two. So you already had this name. When so you I went. chose Tommy Gunn. Anyway, so now I'm worth this girl so, talking to her at Vivid. And they say, so this is Tommy Gunn and he should do it and he would be great. And, she, and the guy says, well, you know, you got a good look. If you ever decide, let us know. Fair enough. So then the next day we would go to the set and I'd, you know, go in and find a quiet place and, you know, I, in the distance, I'd hear her moaning and groaning during her scene. And I met Lee Stone at one point back then. Mm -hmm. And then another time I met Mark Davis. This was in 2000. Wow. And my last meeting, she and I went to a, she and I got picked up at the place where, from Brad Armstrong. Ah, oh, Brad. In his white uh, Camaro convertible <laughs> said wicked up the side. <laughs> you know, right, right? <laughs> wicked. So I know, right? Wicked.com. <laughs> yeah. So we're, I get in and I'm like, wow, this is like cool, you know? Yeah. I, I'm in California with this girl and she's in the porn business and I could possibly be doing this. And here's this guy and he looks cool, you know? You know, get in the car and we get in and we drive off and we end up getting pulled over. Strangely <laughs> enough, we get pulled over. And I'm in the back, she's in the front, and here comes the cop, just like out of the movies. <laughs> With the glasses, you know, yeah, yeah. CHP, right? Yeah. What's going on? And Brad's like, what can I help you, officer? You know, you're going this, that, and the other, and blah, blah, blah. blah. And Brad says, oh, okay. Blah, blah. Probably gives him a wicked business card or something, you know, <laughs> in, in, with his license. Mm -hmm. Next thing he goes, uh, I'm going to give you a warning, Mr. Wicked. <laughs> Slow it down. And Brad says, yeah, no problem. He says, where can I send you a, a, a care package? Oh, my God. He says, uh, oh, here's my, you know, and he sends a bunch of uh, wicked movies to the guy, right? And that's great, right? We all have a chuckle and we end up going. Oh, that's funny. To 
the restaurant. Yeah. So she, so now we're having, we're, we're actually having, we're having dinner and she, she says, hey guys, I'm gonna excuse myself. I'm gonna go to the restroom. I said, okay. So now I'm sitting across from Brad Armstrong. It's just he and I and I go, hey man, this girl's got me all set up. She wants me to do porn, mm -hmm. but I have no idea what a guy like me would have to do to get into business. He says, well, you got a good look. And, uh, we started to connect on the whole dancing thing. Mm -hmm. He was in Canada dancing, yeah. doing the same thing. And he goes, oh, no shit, you do that? Yeah, I do too. I sew and, oh my God, wow, how about that, right? We met mm -hmm. like- Very minded, similar very origin similar. stories, yeah. yeah. Yeah, And he was connected with Wicked at the time, doing all their big movies, you know? Yeah. And he says, uh, your best bet is you come in with a pretty girl to the business. That's and I true. said, well, how's that work? He goes, well, a pretty girl, gets the attention of the producers and the directors in these companies, right? And there's no better thing than the new girl, right? It's mm -hmm. always the new girl, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's how it works, right? And then the new girl says, they say, we'd like to do a test shoot yet with you. And mm -hmm. the new girl says, all right, I'll do one. I'll do it with him. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the moment the guy gets the opportunity right. to stand at the plate and hopefully swing and hit the ball. Because right. maybe everybody wants to do it, yeah. but not everyone can. Especially oh, yes. when you got... Like this, this is only, this would be a small set. Yeah. Add another 10 people. Yeah. And make the room five times bigger. Yeah. And you're in the clothes and wardrobe and a thing and you know, all these yeah. things. And you got to say these words and do all this. So it's yeah. a lot more than everyone thinks. So he says, I said, okay. He says, here's my card. If you ever decide to do it, take my card. So it was kind of like Steven Spielberg gave me a card and yeah. says, if you ever want to act, let me know. So yeah. she comes back. We finish up, he takes us home, and then we fly back to Florida. He uh, he goes on his way, I go. she goes on hers, and I'm back to dancing. And I'm thinking, and I got this card, man, I'm looking <laughs> at it. And it's kind of like a Willy Wonka gold yeah. card. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. won, I won, but I got to, it's the next move, it's the next step, and I keep this card, you know. So I put it in my plan, you know, I'll save it. And so every couple months goes by, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'll tell a couple, you know, Dude, I went to California. Tell me, all my all my dancer friends, what happened? I go, I went out there and I met this guy. And look at the card. He goes, Oh my God, you're gonna do porn. I said, I don't know about that, but it's there's there there it is. If yeah. I decide, so basically, every few months I would pull this card out and look at it, show somebody, and they'd be like, Wow! And then I'd call them up. Hey, Brad, it's Tommy. What are you doing? Oh, I'm on set right now, filming whatever. You want to say hi to you know Jessica Drake or Stormy Daniels or something? Mm -hmm. At yeah. the time, I you know I was like. Uh, uh, he says, have you decided? I said, no, I'm still trying to figure that out. So it took me four years of pulling the card out every few months four and years. calling him. Wow. And he said, hey, man, are you finally going to do this? I said, I don't know, man. <laughs> so eventually, through time, I thought, I'm not getting any younger. At the time, I was 36, which is late. For yeah. Me. And I called him and I said, hey, man, I'm going to do it. Because if I don't do it now, like I said, when I threw myself to the wolves doing the dancing, yeah. I'll never do it. If you don't get so to I, the backflip. You know, I know, you're right? You're never going to get there. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was working for a motorcycle guy, building motorcycles and drag race motorcycles for this gentleman. And uh, he had two children and a, and a wife. And he trusted me with his life to go down the drags at 200 miles an hour working on his motorcycle. Yeah. So and then I was dancing on the weekends. And I just was like, what's what's next for me? I'm, you know, I, I'm, what's out there in the world, right? You know. So I call him and say, you know what? I'm doing it. And he says, okay. I said, so what do I do next? He goes, the best thing for you to do is come to Vegas and meet me at the AVN Awards and I'll take you around and introduce you to the whole place. Oh, wow. That and is I thought, being thrown to the wolves. But who else in the world could say that yeah. they had that kind of introduction to the business that's yeah, that's pretty remarkable it's really remarkable i couldn't have gotten a better and you're gonna meet everybody at the avn show i literally couldn't have gotten a better doorway in yeah so like i said it'd be like spielberg saying here's a come come to the oscars next year and i'll take you and meet the introduction. so i go out there i i cut my long hair and get short hair i work out extra hard go to the tanning salon i go <laughs> I plan this trip, I go out to Vegas, and he says, okay, meet me at the doorway of the Sands Convention, if you remember, it was there. I do. And it was the Mecca of Meccas. Oh, and it was like, at the Venetian, which oh. was the best hotel. That was the best. Like, where they hold the AVN show now, <laughs> Right? We're back at the Hard Rock or the Virgin. Yeah, yeah. Here. But yeah, the Venetian 
that was, was where it was the at. King Kong of all. Every yeah. booth was thousand by a thousand square feet yeah, with, with it was different. luxurious curtains up to the thing and all these girls hot that were hot tubs I remember Naughty America yeah, brought in and like they a were, hot tub one and year and women were untouchable really Crazy. because there was no internet was kind of new yeah there was no social media at all yeah so if you wanted to be a, if, as, a, as, a, as a fan you want to see them you got to go there physically yeah. yeah now it's you can talk to them yeah on the internet or, or, yeah. or social media so go I, he meets me. He says, wow, you clean up good. I said, Come on, I'll take you. So he takes me around to literally Wicked and Vivid, and Digital Playground, Adam and Eve, Hustler, you name it. Takes me right up and right into the heart of the of the place where all these people are waiting in line. He brings me right in and says, this is Tommy Gunn. He's the new guy and this and that and this and that. And then he says, he goes, uh, just tell him that you've done some internet stuff. <laughs> And I had never even shot a scene yeah. at all. Yeah. I have to also say too, like knowing Brad, he must have really believed in you because Brad is not the kind of person who would do that for just anybody. I He's know, and that's, that's about the people that he I've, does favors totally, for. Anna, that's why I was. I mean, he's done a lot for me, yeah. um, but you know, that's just because of, I think like you know he started with my mom. Sure, sure. But he's not the kind of person who's going to help anyone. Like Brad's I very remember, particular absolutely. about the people. And that I remember help. kind of in a conversation, he's like, you know, I really don't do this, but I yeah. don't know. And I thought, well, I appreciate it. And yeah. whatever kind of thing we kind of connected on in some uh, uh, way, the dancing thing or whatnot. Yeah, he probably saw you as like a, oh, a version of himself sure, sure. Like when he started. So he takes me around. I get up a bunch of business cards. I meet all these people, go right up to every star to the front line. Jenna James, Tommy Gunn. And I, I'm blown away. I'm thanked so much. I go back to Florida and tell the guy, I'm giving you my two-week notice. Mm -hmm. I'm selling everything I got, which wasn't much. You know, I had very beat-up truck and it all. It was like a movie. It really yeah. was like, it was like, it literally was like just movie-esque. Yeah. You, you know, I sold everything, got as much money as I could in my pocket. At the time, I was working for this guy. And I said, I'm going to drive to Vegas because I had an old girlfriend. She said, you can stay here, sleep on the couch until Brad decides to call you and tell you your first day is this day. Mm -hmm. So I sold everything, jumped in the car. And I, my, my boss's uh, nephew, I said, he says, I'll take a drive with you to Vegas. And then I said, oh, great. Uh, it'll be company for me driving across country. And then I'll fly you home. He goes, great deal. So next thing you know, we're on Vegas. We're driving across country from California. I say you'll buy to everybody. And this guy, um, um, the nephew of my boss, and I go, you believe it? He goes, I can't believe it. You're doing it. I go, yeah, I'm going to. So here I am going out to do, to be a porn star or not even, but just to do business because that term is, is. So, and I never had shot a scene at all. And you've like, you've really like banked everything on this. And I was like thinking to myself, I sure hope that when the day comes, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. Because I got all this. Yeah. You know? So I get out to Vegas, fly the guy home. Sitting there waiting, doing my thing, kind of getting. A couple of days goes by. Brad says, "Okay, here's your deal. February sixteenth, this location. It's a it's a laundromat in in Chatsworth. I'm doing a movie called Fluff and Fold. Fluff and Fold is actually a term for a service that mm -hmm. like you bring your clothes to the laundromat. Yeah. You drop them off. They wash them and clean them and fluff them and fold them, and, and you come back and you get it. And so he did this movie based upon this this. This, this laundry mat mm -hmm. had Randy Spears with a hair with a hairnet talking like some foreigner, <laughs> and then Cherokee and some other you know the other actors and actresses. Mm -hmm. But at the time, my scene was with Cherokee, so I show up, and I'm nervous as hell. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, this is you know talk about nerves going out and dancing for girls, you know nerves taking your clothes off and do, for photography to do Playgirl. Now this is the the, the maximum nerves because you got about to have now. sex or so he was smart in the capacity where he said, he didn't say to me, he just said, I'm gonna, uh, he decided, I'm just gonna put you in this oral scene, a BJ scene. Start there. Yeah. yeah. I said, okay, he said, so I go in, and the idea is I come in and I gotta go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. so, action, I come in and I go, oh, go to the bathroom. And I go to, go to the bathroom and I go to the door and then Randy Spears pops up and goes, huh? and, 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 and he points at the sign and the sign says, Customers only. Mm -hmm. And I go, shit, hmm, what can I do to, oh, I take my shirt off. 
go over to a washing machine, open it up, throw my shirt in, stick a quarter in, boom. Now I'm a customer, right? Mm -hmm. I go to use the bathroom. I go and he goes up, uh -uh." and I go, what? And he goes, no shoes, no shirt, no service. And I go, shit. So all the while, Cherokee's over here with her laundry basket, clothes, folding them. And she sees this struggle that I'm having trying to get to use the bathroom with Randy Spears giving me a hard time. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was amazing. I'm working my first day with like, yeah, right, with De Niro. really big names. Yeah, basically, right? Or you know, Randy Spears, which was great. And I remember Jonathan Morgan mm-hmm. was there. Yeah, and Jay Crew uh, was the camera guy. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Is that right, Jake? Jake? Uh, Jake Crew? Jake? Wait, Jake? Uh, uh, I'm getting the names confused. Anyway, uh, he was the camera guy, mm-hmm. and and and. Uh, Jonathan Morgan says, hey, man, just so you know, if you can't get it up, we're going to be over here laughing behind the monitor. Oh, my God. And Brad's like, why are you going to say that? And, and, and ha, 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 you know, ha, ha. And I go, oh, OK, great. Well, you know, so yeah. they have a chuckle. Mark Nicholson's there. They're holding wicked people. So I go in. So, so she sees me struggling with Randy. So she takes a shirt. It's a little tank top. And it says sexy bitch on it. She throws mm-hmm. it to me. Mm-hmm. I put it on, so now I got a shirt on. I can go use the restroom. So I go in to use the restroom, and Randy storms off like shit, you know, my stuff in a huff. So she says, she goes in, and that's when the scene happens. So anyway, uh-huh. Brad was smart in a capacity where he put me in a bathroom. Yeah. So it was just me, the girl, and the camera guy. Yeah. Less, less intimidation. Not like so exposed. Uh, exactly. So I go in and do pressure. the scene, and it was, it was strange, but mm-hmm. I managed to do a good job. And he says, okay, you did it. Now I could. Tell everyone else, mm-hmm. hey, I booked him and he did a good, he did, he good a job. So I ended up getting, uh, uh, I ended up, he gave me the, he gave me the green light to the rest of the directors. And then Rick Davis, which I had met in Cal, uh, in Vegas, it was from the East Coast. We had a connection from being East Coasters. Mm-hmm. Rick Davis said, I'll give you a chance. Any Philly boy is a friend of mine. I'll give you a chance. So Rick called, uh, Brad called Rick Davis. Rick Davis said, hey, come on down. We'll give you a shot. So I, I sharpened my teeth, so to speak, on Rick Davis's set. And who was he shooting for? Cherry Box and uh, okay. So there I was doing a my first boy girl scene with Mason Storm. Mm-hmm. And again, I was up and down and all fucked up and just trying to figure it out. And so she says, "Cut, cut, cut." She tells the director, "Hey, beat it." I want to have a conversation with him, but nobody in here. She's, mm-hmm. So she told me, "Hey, you know, you're." not paint you're not focusing mm-hmm. i go okay she's like just pretend it's you and i nobody else we're on the beach having coronas nobody's here i go that makes sense so she says just forget them that the, they're here you know forget all these bodies. everybody's here so she kind of got me comfortable and made me realize you know don't be in my head so much and then i did the scene and finished and everything was went well so she was gracious enough to yeah know, be helpful some girls Throw her hands on her hips I and go, what gonna the fuck s- is this guy? And walk out the door. Yeah, I was just going to say a lot of girls would not do <laughs> yeah. that. They'd just be like, oh my God, like rolling their eyes. You know what I'm saying? Phone, yeah. Like, you know, why so she, you got to put me with the fucking new guy? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I did good. And the next thing you know, I was working, you know, that first month I worked once. Second month, three times. Third month, five, six. Next thing you know, I'm working, you know, 10 times a month. And... September came and they, September came and they, they were doing the announcements for some awards and I got, I got, I got nominated for best male newcomer and in November they, they announced it and then I ended up winning in Vegas. Wow. So that kind of was a, a bit of a. Confidence boost. Yeah. And kind of, it, it, it made me, you know, it kind of made me, uh, put me on the map, so to speak, if you will. And then my second year. I ended up uh, getting cast for Pirates. Yeah, I yeah. want to. So I want to yeah. ask you about that. So we got to take a quick commercial break. Yeah. But when we come back, I definitely want to ask about Pirates because that was like the blockbuster <sighs> movie of the time and the most expensive poor movie possibly like ever created even now, like sure. considering like, you know, inflation and all of that. Yeah, so right. Stick around, guys. We'll be right back. Hey guys, let me tell you about a little secret weapon that's making waves in the bedrooms across the globe. It's called Bathmate, and let me tell you, it is not your average gym workout. 
Now, Bath Me isn't just some hocus pocus magic pump. It's the only FDA regulated hydro pump on the market, making the real MVP of penis pumps. Each bathmate is hand assembled and subject to a thorough manual QA process. So if you're ready to join the ranks of satisfied men and their even happier partners, dive into the bathmate experience. And right now, bathmate is offering our listeners 10% off of their first order when you go to bathmatedirect.com slash holly. With a 60 day money back guarantee, you've got nothing to lose except for, well, lackluster erections. So get ready to pump it up and bring your A game with Bathmate. That's B-A-T-H-M-A-T-E direct.com slash Holly to get 10% off of your first order. Hey guys, we are back. Okay, so we started talking about pirates mm-hmm. before uh, the break. So Pirates by Digital Playground was like the biggest porn movie at the time. I remember going to the premiere actually. Right? And it was a huge deal. Yeah. Tell me besides yourself, like who else starred in it, what your role was, maybe a little bit about pre-production, sure. the whole thing. Cause it was actually shot like on a pirate ship, right? Like yeah. a stage pirate ship? In Tampa or yeah. in a, in a, in a bay, in a, in a port, this, I, I want to say Black Pearl ship, it looked like a pirate ship, I guess. I heard that it, it was, was the legit, same ship yeah. that was used so in Pirates was. of the Caribbean, but I don't know if that's true. I believe, yes. And Mark, uh, Mark Brabones, uh, who, who, who you know finagled all that and worked that all out and did that those things. The movie was actually a, it was a two two companies had come together, Adam and Eve and Digital Playground. Mm. So collectively they put all their contract stars in it. And Janine at this point had come out of the retirement, so they put her in. Uh, so uh, Digital Playground, Digital Playground put her in Janine. So it was Janine, Jesse Jane, Carmen Levana, Riley Steele, you name it. The big stars were all on it. Mm-hmm. Same as the guys. And it was a big, big uh, co-production between these two companies. So we shot all this, the, the deck action at, went to boat, you know, the exterior stuff, no sex or none of that stuff. And I think what happened was they told the the people who, you know, were the, the you know, the, who took care of the boat and whatnot. Yeah, we're shooting a, some sort of a. Yeah, I heard there was drama about it. Educational something or other. Oh, the, an educational? Yeah, it was like a. So they lied about what the yeah because I heard that the owners found out yeah, that it yeah, was a yeah. porn movie and like freaked, they freaked out. But by then we got all we needed and, and and so so we did that and then we end up come back to California and there is where we shot the 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 interiors of the cabin and where the sex would take place and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And so what I meant what I was going to say was that movie really put me on the map. I I got cast as the lead bad guy mm-hmm. opposite of Evan Stone, which is. Another like Al Pacino yeah. in the You business. were Stagnetti, right? Yeah, yeah, I was Stagnetti, right? It was so, Pirate Stagnetti's mm-hmm. Revenge. The first one was Pirates. Second one was second Stagnetti's second was Stagnetti's gotcha. Revenge. Okay. Pirate Stagnetti Revenge. So the first one was great. And there I was, teamed up to to have a shoot and work with Janine. Which is crazy because back ten years prior. She was dancing with Julia Ann doing a, 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 an act called Blondage. You remember that? Oh, I definitely remember Blondage. Yeah. yeah. So I went to the Doll okay. House in in Pompano Beach mm-hmm. to see him dance. My friend was a DJ. I went and watched him from the crowd dancing. This was before I was even in the business. Prior prior to mm-hmm. you know, I was living in Florida and I was working at a bikini shop too, making bikinis. Mm-hmm. So I see, uh, I see. Anyway, I see the two of them. They perform. I end up making the bikinis and give it to them. Jump ahead 10 years later. Now I'm working with Janine in Pirates. Talk about a full circle. Yeah, crazy. Crazy. So now we're uh, we're on Pirates. Biggest, they say hailed as one of the biggest productions ever in, in the adult. Mm-hmm. And I believe it. it's quite the, quite it, the. It might honestly be like, I'm sure that now there's been movies that have cost more, but I think in comparison to like sure. what the dollar was worth at the time. Right. I st- and also, like, I heard that they spent $10 million just on the marketing. You know, it's quite possible. I don't know. But what was kind of neat from that was they shot it over an R version. Well, I shouldn't say it. It's edited in our version. Mm-hmm. And one day I'm in Blockbuster. We all remember Blockbuster. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I saw that, too. Yeah. And I tried to watch it. And it doesn't make any, any sense. Because it was the R version, right? They tried to. You take the sex scenes out because there's like things that happen in the sex scenes or, or parts of the story. And now it ties together. You're like, that don't make sense. It made no sense. Oh, at that's all. funny. 
<laughs> but what was cool about it was there I was on a book on a box cover in Blockbuster, my face. And additionally, like you said, the premiere was in the Egyptians Grumman Theater yeah. in the, in 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 Hollywood. <clears throat> and it was literally like a a, a full blown premiere of a movie. Yeah. And there was one of my dreams come true. I yeah. want to be on the silver screen one day. And sure enough, poof, there we yeah. are in the theater watching. And one of the mistakes I think they made, which is not a mistake, terrible, but mistakes was they ran the full movie. Yeah. So when the sex came on, everybody's okay. kind of looking at yeah. each other like, really? Are so we going to sit through the I, sex scene? I have brought this up so yeah, many times sure. because I remember being there mm -hmm. and laughing about how I'm sitting in a room with like 500 well, pornographers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we're everyone all, got weird when the sex scenes <laughs> came on. funny, right? Like everyone was like, he, he, he. he. Like it got uncomfortable. Yeah, and I was like, which is, this is bizarre. Strange, right? What I would have done is maybe shorten them. Yeah. In an edit. And yeah. did a little premiere version. But needless to say. Yeah. There we were walking down a red carpet and paparazzis in the hole. And it was just really just an amazing yeah. time. And then I... I, I won for supporting actor and mm -hmm. so my second year was that was uh, supporting actor and I won a sex scene with Brit uh, Brittany Sky remember um, Brittany mm, Sky yes yes I do and then Michael Nin yeah yeah I won two awards so my first year I won the male uh, newcomer second uh, uh, supporting actor in the sex scene with Michael Nin and then my third year I won male performer of the year I had nine nominations one male performer of the year and all these four other things so i kind of did really well fast yeah and i was just it was it was it was uh hard to believe it was like wow wait a minute what I, you know and mm -hmm. all i did really was what brad said yeah he says i got i got it's uh it's, it's advice for you i said what's that I'm, I'm waiting for some like profound advice you want to do well in this business i go yeah he goes show up <laughs> And I go, that's it? He goes, yeah. <laughs> but strangely enough, to this present day, some people still can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell Is me it about not it. Amazing. Tell me about it. Yeah. It just blows my mind. Yeah. That people just can't show up. And they'll still get hired. You know, I'll even hear it too from some directors like, I know we're going to take a chance on her again. Yeah. And I go, I've, I've had three canceled scenes prior all back to back why are we doing this again yeah well that because she's popular and they sell and i says but aren't you everybody's hoping like they catch that magic one you know <laughs> like that magic moment the, like the up. one where she's gonna show up and then mm. then it'll be a really popular scene but it's a lot of money to like have to cancel yeah, the scene and or, everybody like, doesn't get paid and, and whatnot and stuff. yeah so the pirates was great pirates one pirates two stagnant revenge two three years later came out and that was even a bigger success mm -hmm. and so that's just it was just it was I, I you hear you see i have a hard time describing how amazing it was there was those years and then you know one year led to another and another and another now here i am 20 years literally i i pretty much won every award they give you in whatever categories yeah except best actor which is okay but oh, well, but yeah. i won male performing year twice or, or AVN, XBiz, and was recently inducted in the XRCO Hall of Fame and then X, uh, AVN 2016. So what the, it's been such a journey that I think the sad part for me now is it's all back there. Mm -hmm. What's... Is it like what, a now what next? kind of situation? I just turned 57 May 13th. Wow. Wait, what? People are going, 57? I'm like, yeah, 57. They're like, you don't look a day over 45. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but. I've seen you mention on Twitter um, about how, you know, you you don't regret your career, but there's certainly like sacrifices yeah, that one makes sure. getting into that. Can you explain that a little bit more? I think what I had said was that I feel like the adult industry is kind of like a casino in some way it's a it's a poker game you sit in you sit down and your buy-in you know to, to to become part of the game you know you got to put your ante in right whatever that money is to match everyone else and you're going to play for the your buy-in is your personal life and your intimacy and your that you're going to sacrifice and you may may be kind of losing those those things because 
you're, you know, you're leveraging all those things. Mm. Like at the end of the day, and I had this feeling at one point, I said, am I, is this, is this going to be the right decision that I'm actually taking this action between two people? Sex, right? Which should be cherished and is, right? It's cherished between people, right? Mm -hmm. People in love and stuff. Mm -hmm. I said, is that, is this going to be a good idea to leverage that as a means of an income? What could go, what could go wrong? Mm. Or what could possibly be some ramifications of that, mm. you know? And how and, do you feel about that now? Well, it's presented quite the difficulty for a, a relationship. I've had a few of them. I was married before the business and I was married in the business. Mm -hmm. And I've had a couple of relationships after that marriage in the business. And the struggles are just natural mm -hmm. for me to wake up and say, all right, sweetheart, kiss you and go have sex with a stranger. Mm -hmm. That's kind of strange. No, nobody, not very many people do that. Yeah. And vice versa. Right. Because we're both typically in the business. Right. Know? My dating pool is the business. Yeah. Have you tried to date girls that are not in the I have. And it just doesn't work. There's a very, you know, I think I can handle it. And I go, okay, well. Yeah. Give that a try. And that doesn't, and then, you know, I come home and. Jump in the shower for nothing less than an hour. And I go, don't touch me until you, and I'm like, that's yeah. awfully weird. So I said, that's nah, not gonna work. With a, and I, I shouldn't say it's not gonna work with a civilian, but maybe that particular one, mm -hmm. I don't know. Cause I know that there are a fair amount of women and men in a business who have civilian, we call them civilian. Yeah, a civilian partners. is somebody who doesn't work in the porn industry. We call it, we, we, you know, civilian partners. But those have to be people who are like very open yeah, to open, open relationships, right? Totally Maybe yeah. are in the swinger lifestyle, sure, sure, sure. don't have jealousy issues, yeah. um, which, you know, it's hard to find somebody like that. And now, so now I say, okay, maybe it's better in the business. Mm -hmm. Problem is, I'm getting older and they're all staying the same age. <laughs> That's a problem. I heard that was a good thing. Well, it is to some degree, but is it how how good is it for me to have an age difference of like 30 years? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and I mean like say what you will, but like people change dramatically over their lifetime. Yeah, of like course. the way that I thought when I was 25 and the way that I think now is like drastically different. I am not the same person. I know, right? So and I'm not ruling it out. Yeah. But and then you still add the whole thing where my relationship that I recall where I've had a few or you know I was blessed in the capacity of really good career mm -hmm. and maybe they didn't mm -hmm. or maybe they did at one point but it was changing and you know coming from a different part of the world now they're in America and I was like I said I was ascending in my career doing really well and you know and maybe they had their moment and now it's difficult for them in in in, in the States trying to get a foothold or I meet someone and she's an, a contract girl. Mm -hmm. Again, half my age, if not more. Mm -hmm. And she only works twice a month, mm -hmm. but wants to hang out with me all the time. Yeah. And I can't, I'm, I got work. Yeah. And that's a problem. Mm -hmm. I wish you were here more often. Mm -hmm. Well, that equals the price. And does it also like, I've heard couples who work in the adult industry say that like, just the physicality of having to have sex with other Ooh. people a lot yeah. makes you right, more tired. And like, you know, you come home from a long day at work and kind of the last thing you want to do is have sex again, right? Uh, like you're tired, like your, yeah. dick's, your dick's done. It's totally. like done for the day. Yeah. Or maybe there's some, and I've had this, I want you to have sex with me before you go to work. Oh, bad idea. Because in their psychology, you know, it's something for their own sort of inner something. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, it's kind of like my territory. Like, almost it's like my, claiming you. Like, yeah. yeah. And then you go off and then whatever. Mm -hmm. And I go, that's not conducive for me. That's going to drain it's, the reservoir. And, you know, if I was like a fighter, boxer or something, why would I box the day before? I got a big box match coming yeah. up. So there's that. And so you, you have to have that understanding. Your, your partner or your spouse or whoever should have that understanding for both parties because... The last thing I want you to do, honey, is go to work and be sore mm -hmm. and be worn out. And, yeah. Because that's what happens. Guy or girl, same. Yeah. Even though we're des designed differently, it's the same friction at mm -hmm. the end of the day. And it's same yeah. tired and same whatever. And now, 
now I had, I'm 57 onto it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. I told my one girlfriend, I remember telling her, I said, look, I want you to realize something. She was 22 at the time. Uh -huh. I was 48 years ago. I said, I'm never going to cheat on you ever. She goes, how do you know that? I said, I don't have the energy. <laughs> I said, I can't even imagine snoop snooping around behind her to go off and do that. I said, I can't even keep up with you now. <laughs> and I said, that bothers me because you have such a sensational appetite for sex. I'm 48, you know, I'm, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I, I, I only have so much energy in the reserves and it's either I go to work and have it spent there and, and get money or I spend it with you and I suffer at work and then everyone's like, is failing these, yeah. days, these days and now i'm not working and i'm with you more and then there's problems with finances and then you go hey look i used i used to like the guy you were with all that money and now you don't have it anymore and you're not working i'm leaving so where, where where's the yeah that's you know? tough that's tough so, um i, I mean I don't also know the uh i mean so you've actually had an injury on set right multiple yeah multiple. one of them i'll talk to you about was was a digital playground scene mm. And it was for Robbie D. Mm -hmm. And we were out in like California City at like a gold mine. Mm -hmm. It was an actual gold mine. You drove off the street and through this dirt road and up this hill. And he had a he had a location set up, bought, paid for. Mm -hmm. He had extras and a and a, a catering truck with a with you know bathrooms and whatnot all brought up there. And it's like twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollar day of, of just production costs and mm -hmm. makeup and the whole yeah. everything. No, the Robbie D digital you know? playground productions were a big deal. I know, right? So I'm in this me and my co star um, Ivy uh, I sh I just said her name the other day and I am no, missing Ivy so. something. Uh, I uh, anyway, you'll have to excuse me. That's, That's what okay. Yeah, well, you've had so sex with a lot of I know, women. right? <laughs> so we're in the we're in this physical coal mine or like a gold a gold mine. Yeah. So it's a big mountain with a hole chopped in, and it goes in 150 feet, 200 feet. So we're in there, and we're chipping away at the wall with these little fake things, or real things, but we're pretending we're doing something. And they do a little camera shake. You know, they just shake the camera and make it look like there's an earthquake or something's happening. So I say to her, Madison Ivy. We got to get out of here or we're going to be dead. So we run out. And as we're running out of this mine shaft, I got this metal helmet on with the light. She's got the same. We got these overalls. And I'm running. She's in front of me. I'm running and the helmet's bouncing. And it's going to fall off. So I grab it to keep it on. And I'm running with my hand up there. Just as I, I come to this area where the, the ceiling of the thing is low. Mm-hmm. And I run right into the right into the rocks, crash, and I jam my neck, and I crush my finger between the metal helmet and the ceiling of this. Oh. And I see it, and it's bleeding. And I push, put my hand down, and I run out, and I get to the, I get to where our mark is. Because you're a professional, and you're I, gonna keep going. I'm yeah, bleeding, but get, I'm gonna let's get, get to the mark. Damn shot. We get to the mark. I stop, and I go, man, it's a good thing we got out of there, or we'd have been dead cut and then i go fuck <laughs> and my hand what i had done was i tore the the nail bed op off Ooh. the nails fl look it's Ooh. it's hanging off literally Ooh. and the, the skin it's dreadful look like i smashed it with a hammer and everyone's like what and i go yeah look and they're like holy shit blood's going down my arm at this point mel's on the scene mm -hmm. makeup artist mel mm -hmm. put my hand in a water bottle shake it up things red toss it we're looking at it and i'm like Fuck. mel's helped me dress it up and do mm -hmm. stuff and we we finally and it was horrifying mm -hmm. i was like man and it's boom boom you know he's got his own heartbeat at this point i wrap it up and robbie comes over he says yo are you still going to be able to do the scene <laughs> we still got to have the scene now of course of course and i says you know what i said hey man we're here right he says i know i can't come back because <laughs> this we got to, we would tow the big trailer home and come back yeah, the next day. It's yeah. not going to happen. I said, all right, you know, give me time. And I go to her and I said, Madison, look. She's like, oh my God, I can't even look at that. It's dreadful. And that hanging off. I'm surprised I didn't get stitches or anything. I just kind of put it back together and just taped it up like a big hot dog. Mm -hmm. So then I said, okay, let's do it. And so I hid my hand behind her as much as, much as I could. In yeah. 
Yeah. But you, there's there's a photograph somewhere out there. I, it, it, you can see this white bandage on there. Yeah. And did the scene, and he was like, Phew. and then I earned the title from him as the cleanup, the cleaner. <laughs> Because I started to notice I would go to set the last call time of all the call times. And I said, Robbie, what's the deal here? I've noticed you booking me. I, I'm always the last guy. He says, yeah, I know. Because we we know we're going to go home on time with you <laughs> as the guy. Yeah. And I said, okay. He says, because you've proven yourself in such hardship, in, in, in such these hard, you know, having sex on the hood of a car in the desert, 120 degrees. Mm -hmm. No problem. You did it. Mm -hmm. you, over here, you did that. This, you know. Mm -hmm. He says, we've, I said, no. Nah. I said, so So you mean to tell me I, I get all the hard, yeah, it's unfortunately. I know, right? It's just like one of those ones. things. And like I said, the, all right. The good one, yeah. yeah I remember going on set, showing up with my bag and my thing later in the day, and the, the crew would see each other and high five. They're like, Yes. We're going home early. We're going home on time. <laughs> and I was like, okay, great. Because you can't put the last guy, new guy up. Yeah. Because you know, you, then he holds back the entire day. But if you put him up first, no, and you put the new guy up first. Because yeah. you could still gain, you can gain, if you holds up the, if, if he screws up in the beginning, mm -hmm. you still got the rest of the day to maybe catch up. Mm -hmm. But if you get through the, you know, and then you put the last guy, new guy at the end, mm -hmm. everyone's like, Okay, we're yeah. not a wrap out yet. Yeah. We're I guess it depends on like how. Yeah. I would probably, let's see. It's I'd tough, probably you know? put the new, personally, I'd probably put the new guy last. Yeah. Because yeah. then I know I would get everything else sure. done and he wouldn't right. hold back yeah, the it's possible of everybody true, true. else. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I got the rest of the day to deal with, with this. Sure. tech. <laughs> but I got everything else done. Like right. so, for me, I'd probably put right. you last, put not you last, but that sure, person sure. last. But I get it. Yeah, I get yeah. It. I was like, and it just goes to show, though, like how much of the production rides on the male talent. Because at the end of the day, without that, yeah, aspect of it, yeah. And one of the things too we could have the conversation of is, I've had to deal with this thought over mm. the years of. The guy's no, doesn't matter. The guy doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I've heard that before. Nobody cares about the guy. Mm -hmm. The guy doesn't matter in the in the in the scene. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm like, how, how is that possible? Well, nobody. Ca I go well without the guy, you don't have anything. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. kind of it's like that thing where. The customer may not care about the guy as much because sure. they're there for the girl. Right. But the guy matters so much. So I mean, to much. the production, he's the most important thing, right? right? It's right. The, the male talent is like the, 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 the foundation that, that Literally. holds every, the glue that holds the scene together. It's funny you mentioned that because I've used that before. Yeah. The glue that, you know, the unseen, the unspoken, yeah. you know, and, and, and I've said this before. I said, our, I think our role is you got the girl and she's the painting. She's the beautiful painting, right? Mm -hmm. She's the painting, mm -hmm. but we're the frame. Yeah. And together we make the whole thing. And, and Seth mentioned recently, uh, we had this conversation. He's like, the women are the rose and we're the vase. Yeah. So together we make the whole thing, right? Yeah. And, and, and so some of the, for some of the ladies out there, and there's a lot of them who are like, male talent is so pivotal. We need, you know, because mm -hmm. they make us, kind of like a male cheerleader you throw her up in the air yeah and you catch her so she doesn't come crashing down and, yeah. and get hurt and we make her look great they're not here to see us mm -hmm. per se but they're here to see us the whole thing right yeah because so, i've had some girls go oh you're my prop today and i go what's your name yeah oh i'm Susie from idaho i'm saying how long you've been in the business oh just a week and i go you know yeah i'm gonna make you famous yeah. But yeah. I don't know. But those girls come and go. Yeah, it's a shame. But I wish, you know, and again, big shout out to the guys doing it because, you know, as much as we might not matter, we yeah. matter. No, I mean, we, I say it's As a director, you're like, my God, the guy's so important. Oh, yeah. I say it on the show all the time. The guy's Jeez, like the most right? important thing. Like, there's such a small. That's why you only see them, the same can, ones over and over again. Who can do 25, it, 30, or however yeah, many. Who can do what you do. Over the course of the year. You know, I mean, you're like a very special breed of person. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you're also like the kind of guy that everybody likes. 
you you don't have an attitude. You come in, you're professional. Yeah. You're not like, you know, like you're not going to get canceled because you were like, like some weirdo or something. I mean, there's, a, there's been shit. some shit yeah, that's gone down crazy. with male performers that's like kind of terrifying, you I know? know right? and, and you're somebody that I feel everybody knows they can trust. Yeah. When this whole, when that whole thing took place and it's not as prominent as it was, but there was a, like the time where that whole mute, the, everybody yeah. was like wondering who's going to, who's going to be the next guy yeah. on the lips of everybody. Yeah. You know, and I was like, I never had a, I never was like, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So how are was, they going to find out? Cause I, I knew early in the beginning, in the business going back my first two, one year, two years, I, I learned that my rapport with the girls is what's going to make my career be yeah. great. Yeah. Because I was a sweetheart. Hey, hi, well, how are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm not all over him in the makeup chair. Yeah. I'm not some weirdo. I was, are you okay? I'm not hurting you. I'm not, I'm not yeah. support him a certain way. Hold him. A, and they never, they were always like, oh, I feel such good. Because yeah. I look at it like I'm. they're in my care when I'm working for it. Mm -hmm. I know it might sound strange, but I'm caring for them. No, that's true. And and I, I remember there was a couple, uh, one particular guy goes, you're Mr. Congeniality. And I go, what the boy? He goes, everyone likes you. I goes, well, that's, you sh that should be. Yeah. Because a lot of people dislike you and, and you're suffering from it because you're on a no list from some girl. I right. was never on a no list. If I ever was, it was for a couple of reasons. And it was, it was you're a little too big. Okay, fair mm -hmm. enough. You look like my dad. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah fair Not, enough. You're an asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't like you. Yeah, yeah. There's only those things. And yeah. I said, fair enough, that's great. Yeah. So I, my rapport with the with the girls was always uh, paramount, and, up, uh, and it's still to this day. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I wanted to have a good experience and not be like, oh, I'm yeah, a weirdo. Or yeah, no, that's I think that's so important. Um, you also acted in an episode of Entourage where you played a character named Porn Vince. Right. How did that opportunity come about? There was a day I was on a, a digital playground set with Mark Kramer, and he says, "Hey, man, there's a." Uh, there's a call for a entourage who's looking for a male porn star. I said, okay. He says, here's the info. I said, let me call. So I call and I said, hey, my name is Tommy Gunn. I understand you're looking for this, that, and the other. And they said, yeah. I said, well, anything specific? A new guy or a guy who's been in quite a while? I said, we want them all from new to been a veteran. I said, okay. So I get the details and the following day I go down and I get the sides mailed to me and I go over the lines and it's not a lot, it's not a big, mm -hmm. and it's uh, apparently in the, in the episode, Sasha Gray, she was wrote into the story in this episode as to be dating Vince, who was the, the lead in the movie, mm -hmm. in the episode. And he had evidently was going through this, this rebellious time doing cocaine and all these drugs and whatever. And he was dating Sasha Gray in this episode. And he's getting a lot of flack from his friends. Like, what are you dating her and this and that and blah, blah, blah. So in the episode, Sasha Gray is supposed to be, she had retired from the business, but now she's thinking about getting back in. And her returning, her returning movie is going to be this big gangbang. <laughs> so Vince is like, I don't know if I like that idea. And she's mm -hmm. like, well, it's not up to you. It's my career and I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And, and it turns out they cast me as an, as the same name as Vince, as Vince, porn Vince to be her ex fiance in the episode. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of the 10 guys and he's not, he's not liking that. Right. So he's not liking two things. The fact that she's going to go back and do porn and possibly work with her ex fiance. So she's on a set in the studio and this is the day it unfolds. I get called and I go down there. They chose me to, they chose me to be, to play Vince. I, I, I ended up going to do the thing. And I split and they gave, I gave my, my email and then the day later they said, hey, we're considering you. And then another day went by. It was, it was funny. I got a call from some, another producer and they said, they're looking for a Tommy Gunn type male performer. And I go. <laughs> oh, you I, mean me? <laughs> I said, I was just there and I did the thing and nobody said anything about, oh, you're Tommy Gunn. But I said, they, they, they were asking for a Tommy Gunn type, somebody who could intimidate Vince. And I thought, maybe I must have done something right where they're using me as an example of mm -hmm. a guy they would want to. So anyway, long story short, they choose me. Wouldn't they be funny if they were just like, you know, we need a Tommy Gunn type. You're just Somebody, not, yeah, not going to yeah, work right. for us. And you're like, uh, I am Tommy Gunn. I know, like, right? Yeah, but you don't, know, you're not right? really like Tommy Gunn enough. I know, right? <laughs> so I was there. I went there and I saw Manuel and Johnny Castle and a few other gentlemen that mm -hmm. were trying out for the part. 
So anyway, I long story short, I get the part, and I'm all excited. Wow, this is great. So I go down, and I meet uh, Doug Ellen and, and everybody, and he tells me, pulls me aside. Okay, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this, that, and the other. Be, be, you know, and it's not much of an exchange. So Vince shows up on set. Sasha's there, and you could tell by virtue of the way everything's set up in the background. In the blurry background is a bunch of guys in jeans and no shirt setting up to get like a photograph, mm -hmm. a photo shoot. And I'm one of them. And then she says, Vince pops up and she says, hey, what are you doing here? And he says, hey, I'm here because uh, I came to support you. And she's like, no, you didn't. He goes, no, really. She says, you're here to cause trouble. He says, no, I promise. I swear. Which douchebag is he? And she says, I told you. And she's like, no, I swear. I'm just kidding. Who, who is he? And she says, I'll hey, Vince, Vince. And, and I turn and I go and I walk over and I meet Vince, mm -hmm. porn Vince, or I mean, Vince, Vince and You're, Sasha. Yeah. And I go, hey, Vince, what's up? Big fan. He goes, oh, sorry, I can't say the same. I've never seen your work. I said, well, that's a shame. I've seen all of yours, even Meta Ian. And he goes, what are you being an asshole? Because Meta Ian was a flop. Right, right. I, I and, sort of watched the show. So, yeah. yeah. And Sasha goes, <laughs> drags him away. And I'm standing there like. Okay, so that was, I got mm -hmm. cast to play that, which is great because I got Taft Hartley. Mm -hmm. And I ended up paying my dues, and now I'm SAG after. Oh, that's awesome. For all these years, which yeah. is great. So that's kind of how that unfolded, and that was fun. And still to this day, I'll speak to Doug Allen occasionally. Hey, Doug, it's me. How's life? And, you know, because we talk on Twitter, and yeah. he's got German Shepherds, and so do I. So that's cool. Speaking of, just because you brought it up, and this will be my last question because I know we need to move on, uh, we need to close up. Sure, but, sure. Um, how do you feel about game banks in general? Because I know like a lot of, like when I talk to girls about <clears throat> setting up game banks, it's always like it actually depends on the guy. Cause some guys like hate doing it sure. and other guys are okay with it, but they can only work with other guys. Like, how do you feel about game? Well, banks? I'll tell you, here's how I feel about gang bangs. I'll tell you what happens. And it's just the natural like behavior of men. Mm -hmm. And whether they know it or not, it's like a unspoken like, alpha whatnot or what you know mm -hmm. this hierarchy of where you fall in this mm -hmm. so now you're going to get 10 guys or five guys or however many right who's going to want to out fuck the other guy just naturally <laughs> yeah which goes against the director's needs because yeah. it's not a contest we need we yeah. need to get what we need we so, are you are and if you're many in vases showcasing one rose <laughs> yeah yeah so if we if one guy is out to do that and he's going to upset some other guys mm -hmm. mentally and whatever intimidation way why because it just happens naturally i've been on plenty of scenes where it's just it's me and a, and a boy boy girl mm -hmm. and i meet the guy hey how are you and i don't know him mm -hmm. and we got wood problems yeah because he's like tommy intimidates me yeah and i'm that wasn't my intention i just by me be, being there yeah because you know i'm a big star in his eyes and he's just a new guy and and i always was like well I was always very touchy, like, who's the guy? Because that matters, right? Because yeah. otherwise you end up in this, what set out to be a specific thing mm -hmm. turns into a, just a fiasco because yeah. out of six guys, two guys can get hard, the other two aren't. And yeah. we're trying to, and I've been in that position before mm -hmm. where I got off, I got, and it's a psychological thing. I got off to a late start. Mm -hmm. So my, my mind starts like, oh, look at all these guys off to the races and I'm over here struggling. Mm -hmm. And that just kind of compounds. Mm -hmm. Of course, I managed to clear my mind and get into the game, and now I'm back. Okay, ready. And I, but that can, that can happen. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. how do I feel about them? I don't do them anymore. So not not a huge fan. I just don't have the energy either. Yeah, because it turns into there's only one food ball, tr ball of food, and all these guys trying to get to it. <laughs> and I'm going, you know what? Have at it. <laughs> get in there. When it's my turn, I'll come in and do a few things. And at the end, I'll do the thing and we go home. Yeah. But I personally don't. I've done enough of them. Yeah. Because in my career earlier, I I, I didn't want to be that guy who only did those things. Because yeah. I wanted to be well-rounded, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you can't win male performer or those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all he only does whatever. Mm -hmm. So I thought, let me, let me try. It's another challenge. Right? I've never had sex next to five guys rubbing elbows with one girl. Let's try to see how that works. <laughs> And that's a strange setup. Yeah, yeah. Just naturally. Yeah. I usually typically would ask who are the guys. Yeah, no, 100%. And that's what the guys ask. That, that's usually. Not even who's the girl. Who's the guys? Usually what happens. I want to know if it's John Strong. He's cool. Great, yeah. great buddies. He'll even support your foot if it's sliding. Yeah. 
you'll put a foot, you know, so you don't. I feel like like and like these guys. I feel like literally every the gangbang that I've shot, which hasn't been that many, yeah. like I feel like John Strong's been. In, like, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> so there's these there's these select guys. Yeah, that you're just like that can just like do it. Yeah, and they're friendly, and there's no there's yeah. no underlying like weirdness because a, a new guy yeah wants to prove himself, prove himself. Mm -hmm. and that's fine too, but it's just. It's like an app. It's like a a, a a moment of who knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know. So yeah, I don't know. I I don't have the energy for him. I've yeah. had I've been asked for him, and I'm like, ah, but I'd rather take a day off. Yeah. And now, and where I'm at now is I'm shooting a lot of VR stuff mm. because that is also a very hard thing to do. That's and very hard very because there's no there's very this, this separation. You don't get a much with the girl yeah you know because you're supposed to you're kind of playing if it's a pov yeah, thing you're yeah. playing the user I'm only from here down yeah so you can't really interact or do anything she's to do everything to you and sure. you just have to be like a hard dick and you're yeah, just like yeah yeah i yeah, know it's not easy so how i managed to work that out was when i first started it it was it was kind of weird i'm like this is strange but i'm over here behind this thing and i can't use my hands so i'm gonna put it behind me and pretend i was tied up mm-hmm that's kind of kinky. I like that. Okay. And then the girl's doing whatever she wants. Yeah. And I'm going, and I can't talk because yeah. I can't make any noises yeah. anyway. So that is how I kind of got through that. And the next thing you know, I just managed to be too good at them. So yeah. I'm blessed in the respect that the VR stuff is what's keeping me going these days. And I'll get the off scene here with, you know, some other directors that put mm -hmm. me in whatever you know stepdad or whatnot because that's where it's at yeah luckily for the old stepdad thing or whatnot you know that's a that's a genre right so. it's funny though because it's like you got to either look like a dad or like a son like that middle it's the same with girls too yeah. it's like that middle age is a little bit weird yeah like, what's like are you there? a stepdaughter yeah. or a stepmom if you're like just an in-between like hot girl or hot mm -hmm, guy like mm -hmm. ah we can't we can't put you pigeonhole you one of the things that i that i am working with is a gentleman uh, doing a, a documentary, Joel Vandermolen is. Mm -hmm. is uh, I met him in 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 Vegas, ABN, and we we hit it off. And just he had come off a project that he was doing. Uh, did a lot of did really well. It's called Gypsy, Gypsy Billionaire. It's on Prime. Mm -hmm. And he was out there, kind of just kind of you know seeing what the landscape was out there in Vegas. And strangely enough, we stood next to each other. And next thing you know, I'm like, "Hi, what's your name?" He goes, "I'm this guy." And I said, "Wow, really." I'm I'm Tommy. He goes, oh yeah, tell me about yourself. And the next thing you know, we 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 basically hit it off, and we become really great friends. In addition to wanting to work on a project together collectively, which is a documentary, which is going to kind of shed a bright light on the business and the mm -hmm. and the great people that people don't really expect to be in the business. Yeah, everyone sees the business down their nose in some seedy looking type of way, yeah. but it's legitimate entertainment and. What's crazy is, if it wasn't so popular, any of the stuff we would shot, nobody would buy it, yeah, or pay for it, or, or what, or view it. But strangely enough, it's, you know, they say seventy percent of the internet is adult related Only searches. Only seventy percent, maybe more, right? Eighty. I'm <laughs> so, so you know. Anyway, so we're gonna, we're that's our, that's our mission, right? Is, uh, to set out and do that. And is that why there's these random cameramen yeah. right here? Is that where they came from? I was I, wondering. Yeah, yeah, and I feel strongly <laughs> about it because yourself, myself, we feel like we've been defend our industry. We mm. have to defend ourselves in, yeah. in, in whatever capacity because mainstream looks at us and civilian world, they look at us. I don't know if it's out of their own whatever shortcomings of their self like i wish i could do that but i can't so i'm gonna hate them for it a lot of people have hang-ups about sex uh for it's many like, many different reasons so it's the the comments the negative comments i always see it as a projection yeah of like their really, people's own like internalized shame or inadequacy or something like that because it's just like you don't have to like porn that's fine but like if you're gonna go out of your way to like follow someone on Instagram and then really like lay leave them, them these like horrible, like clearly it's something that like yeah. you think about a lot. Like it's, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I mean, there's things out there that I don't love, but I'm not like, but you don't, I'm not just, wasting my, yeah, my, I don't my mind to on it. it. I go over here yeah, and do other things. Like yeah. I do other things. Another thing so. too, I'd like to just in closing is that, uh, 
I think due to some of that shaming that people have towards us, it puts some kind of a pressure on some of the people of us, our, our, you know, our fellow uh, workers and brothers and sisters, so to speak, that, you know, mental health is a problem. Yeah. And, you know, we recently seen and there's a there's a there's a list of them that we could, you know, uh, mention that aren't with us anymore yeah. because of the struggles and, the str- and, and some of the things that they've dealt with or whatever. And they chose uh, they chose a, 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 a permanent solution to, to a temporary, you know, problem. and that's that thing. And r- most recently he was Cagney Lynn Carter. And yeah. I had just been talking to her actually like a few weeks before and she was going to come down and come on my podcast. Oh, you know, and, and, and again, she's 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 only one, but we can't we have to be some sort of a voice for them you know yeah I don't know. yeah no it's it's heartbreaking and it's i've always said that i think the most damaging thing about porn is the stigma that comes with it right from not the industry itself no because we're all loving and like i said i don't uh but we have to we have to recognize that and it's not only a business it's not only our industry mm-hmm Mental health and suicide is happening every day see it all in the time. world. Yeah, with veterans and uh, and you know it's 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 a thing. So I'm a survivor, not that I tried to do it and failed, but mm-hmm. a family member of mine did it, and I yeah. discovered I discovered them and talk about looking death in the eye. I looked at it in the eye, and it was it looked right back at me, and it was scary. Yeah, so, that's awful. Yeah. Anyway, it's one of those things that that you know death is a part of life. I get it, but that in that nature and when it comes in that packaged up in that capacity it's it's hard yeah you know so. tell me i live a little like a caring and yeah like soul that you are well and i love that about you that's what i try to encourage kindness and helpfulness if you can help somebody help somebody if you can do something for them do it don't do it with with any intention that you want to get some reward out of it or yeah. whatever it is you know just do it be because guess what we're we all come into this world by ourselves. We leave by ourselves. Whether yeah. we're born a twin or we die on an airplane. And at some point, you know, you can't take whatever it is with you. So yeah. share, leave it behind and give it and be helpful. And yeah. don't compare yourself to anyone else. You're an individual. And that's what makes you so important And is you, because you're special in that capacity. And that's what our business does a lot. A lot of people look, oh, they won this or they won that. And it's a shame because, and even in the other were other worlds you know people are held up in such a oh, then you got other people who are trying hard and they don't feel that way and social media is another way it's another platform people look and they go oh my life is so terrible compared to that person's the social media has a way of making it look like everyone's life is so great mm-hmm. yeah but everyone's struggling with something deep down inside we've all got something yeah. you know so be kind to each other be kind to one another lord knows the world needs it i love that I love that. Tommy Gunn dropping knowledge for all of us. Uh, well, thank you so much again, Tommy. And can you let everyone know where they can find you on social yes. media with your like lovely words of kindness and encouragement? Yeah, social media, right? I guess uh, Twitter, T-O-M-M-Y-G-U-N-X-X-X. Instagram, T-H-E-E-T-O-M-M-Y-G-U-N-N, the Tommy Gunn. And then TikTok is the same. T O M M Y T A G T O M M Y G U N N and then same as uh, YouTube, but again. And any uh, any websites you want to plot or anything? I don't, but I do have something I'm working on. It's a book that I'm working on. So I've been working with a writer, and it's been quite the journey, as you can imagine. We have to talk about the good and the bad times, and to have to relive some of those are wonderful in the good sense, and a little tough in the bad, dark periods mm-hmm. of time. But I'm excited about that because I would love to share just my journey to from you know when we start to to to, to present day and all the great wonderful things that have happened and Mm -hmm. some of the things that define me as a man i guess yeah made me who i am and you have a very interesting story so will people be able to find out about that like through social media yeah i'll be updated there absolutely yeah we'll have a release date and that should be interesting perfect i can't wait you have to send me a copy i certainly will in fact i might need a photograph Ah, the cover. Oh. I have an idea of a picture, but I'll show you, and you can say, "Can we? Can we? Can we mimic that look?" Okay. Okay. Maybe you have a. All right. Gotcha. You know, you know a person you can help. I don't know. I don't know if I know anybody <laughs> who knows how to work a camera. You know what I mean? <laughs>
<laughs> you would be one. It would be an honor. So. Oh, well, thank yeah. you so much. It was an honor to have you on. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for coming. And of course, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to support this podcast and get access to the bonus Q&A that we are going to do now. I had actually a lot of Patreon members send me in questions. So I'm excited wow. to ask them of Tommy. Uh, you can join us at patreon.com slash Unfiltered. Otherwise, just go to hollylinks.com for links to all of my socials and all of my platforms. I, I have a lot of them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.